Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the fourth video in my CentOS series. And this time around, we are going to take a look at editing files. So let's go ahead and dive back into CentOS. So here we are on my laptop. So let's get into editing some files. As a recap in the last video, we took a quick entry-level look at navigating the file system. And while we were doing that, we actually created this test file right here. I also showed you how to remove files and directories. Now I'm going to remove that test file and just reiterate that in the last video, I showed you how to use the touch command. So the test file is gone. The touch command, like I mentioned in the previous video, will create a file if it doesn't already exist. And we can see that test2 is here because I just used the touch command to create it. So essentially, I did teach you how to create files, but the problem is any file you create with the touch command is an empty file. As we can see with the ls-l command, the file size is literally zero. Now when it comes to creating files with actual content, we generally use a text editor to accomplish that. There's multiple text editors available for Linux, and whichever text editors you may or may not have by default depend on the distribution. In the case of CentOS, at least in my installation, we have two text editors available. We have Nano, and we also have Vim as well. Now to keep things simple, I'm going to demonstrate the concept of creating and editing files with the Nano command, but both Vim and Nano are perfectly acceptable. It's just that Nano is a little bit easier for newcomers, but I have an entire video series on Vim so if that's what you would like to learn instead of Nano, then you can go ahead and check that out. Or maybe you want to learn both, in which case we'll go through Nano in this video, and then you can check out my Vim videos later. Now, real quick, I want to mention the witch command. And no, I'm not talking about the witch from the Wizard of Oz. I'm talking about this command right here. It's a quick command that really isn't detailed enough to warrant its own video, but we can use it in this case to find out if a particular program is installed or not. To use the which command, you just type which, as I just did, and then you give it a command. So for example, nano, I'll press enter. And as you can see, what it's doing is it's telling us where the nano command is located. So we can see that it's user bin nano. If you ran this command, and there was no output at all, then that means nano isn't installed. We could do the same thing with Vim, and we get similar output. So based on what we're seeing here, we now know that in my installation, both nano and Vim are available for use. If you were following along with me when we installed CentOS, you should also have these installed already. But if you don't, then you might want to take a detour over to the video in this series where I talk about package management, and then you can install Nano, for example, if you don't already have that on your system. Now, like I mentioned, Nano is a text editor. If I execute the Nano command, I'm immediately brought into a text editor right inside the terminal. Now, if I was to press the super key and then start typing text, which will show any applications installed in the graphical user environment that has the word text in it. I do have a default GUI text editor and that works just fine. And here it is, this is gedit. As with any other text editor, I can just start typing here and I can also save the file, click the save button. And then if I open a file manager, we can see that the file I just created is here. But the reason why I'm going to focus on Nano instead of this graphical text editor is because not all CentOS installations are the same. Quite a few of them won't have a graphical user interface at all. 
and you might need to rely on the command line. So back here in the terminal, Nano is running right in our terminal window. Even if I didn't have a GUI at all, I could still execute the Nano command, and just like before, I can type some stuff. And Nano is actually a very easy text editor to use. If you look here at the bottom, we have a list of commands. They start with a character that's pointing upward and then a letter, which basically the character just represents control. So we can easily save the file by doing control O to write out. And when we do that, control O, it will ask us for a file name. So I'll go ahead and type that. I'll just call it awesomefile.txt, I'll press enter. And then we can also see that we can exit by doing control and X, so I'll do that. And now we're back on the terminal. If I list my storage, we have awesome file right here, just as we would expect. Now already, there's a handful of things that we've learned. Simply entering nano will bring us right into the text editor, and if we save a file with control O and give it a file name, it'll default to our current working directory, which in my case is currently my home directory. And I also showed you how to save a file and exit the editor as well. But of course, as with all things, there's definitely more to it than just that. Now we used Nano with no options at all, but if we give it a file name, it will start with that file name. If that file exists and I press enter, it's going to load it and now I can continue to work on that file. I'll go ahead and exit. If I give it a file name that does not exist, I'll just say test three because that file doesn't exist. It'll open the editor with a blank window. It even says new file because test three doesn't actually exist. If I start typing here and then I save the file, control O, and then save the file, it defaults to test three because that's the file name that I gave it on the command line. I don't have to go along with that though. I could actually add an extension to it. I could call it test five, whatever I want. So if I give it a file name and that file name doesn't exist, it's practically just a suggestion. So I'll press enter and it's actually asking if I would like to save it under a different name. And I'll just say Y for yes. And it even changed the file name that I have displayed up here. If I exit again, control X, we can see again that we have the files right here. And also I will reiterate that we could tell the difference between directories and files by the first character in the permission string. The permission string I will cover in a different video coming up, but a hyphen is a file and a D is a directory, we can't always rely on the fact that directories will be colored blue because that's not always going to be the case. That basically just depends on how your shell environment is configured. It's beyond the scope of this video, but we can always rely on the first character to tell us if it's a file or a directory. Now clear the screen, and we don't actually have to open the file in a text editor to view the contents. There's actually several different ways you can do this. For example, you can do cat, short for concatenate, and then a file name, and press enter, and it will display the contents of that file. We can also do less, which is going to show the contents. Now less is great because if the file is larger, we can scroll easier. Otherwise, with cat, we can only scroll up and down if our terminal allows us to, which may not always be the case, and I could press Q to go back. We could do more, does the same thing. There's many different ways we can view the contents. Now when we do this and we use a command to print the contents of a file, the contents of the file, as you can see here, and also here, are being displayed in standard output. Now it's okay if you don't know what that means just yet, just make a note of it, and I'll explain it later in a future video. I'll clear the screen, and I'm going to bring Nano back, but I'm going to do something a bit differently. I'm going to edit a file that exists somewhere else on the file system. So you don't have to follow along with this, but I'll do Etsy, SSH, 
sshd underscore config. This file may or may not exist on your system, which is why I mentioned that you don't have to follow along. I just merely want to show you that you can use nano and then as an argument, give it a full path to a file that exists somewhere else on the file system. And as long as you have permission to view it, it'll work. Now, as you can see here, it's funny I should mention permission because my user account does not have permission to read this file. So I guess if nothing else, you just got to see what that looks like when it fails. So I'll do control X and break out of here. Let's see if I can actually edit this file. I'll just remove the D and I'll press enter. And this file actually came up just fine. It is warning me that I don't have access to write to the file because this file exists outside of my home directory. That's to be expected. Now, what I'm editing here is the SSH config file. There's two. I have videos that talks about SSH on my channel already. I'm not going to go into detail right now what that is and what it does for us. And you may or may not even have this to begin with, but I just thought it'd be a file just to show you that you can not only open a file that exists somewhere else in the file system, but of course you could also use the page up and page down keys to scroll through the file. But perhaps more importantly, I wanted to show you that you can search within a file as well. Now notice here, control W shows where is. So I'm going to do control W and it's going to bring up a box that's going to allow me to type something in perhaps something I want to find within the file. So I'll do port and I'll press enter and it brings me here to where it says port 22. So if I wanted to customize that option, I could do that. But when it comes to editing SSH configuration, this isn't actually the file we would edit. We would actually edit the file that does have the D in the file name. But again, this is just a random example. I wanted to show you that you can edit files from other locations, and you can also search for text as well. You can even cut text, so I could do Control K, and that line goes away, and then I could do Control U, which will paste. I can just keep pasting it all day long, over and over and over again. I could do Control and then backslash for replace. I could type what I want to search for, so I will press Enter, because the last thing that I searched for was port, and it remembers that. I could type something else here though if I would like to search for something else. I'll just press enter and then I can type what I would like to replace it with. So I'll just say randomly turtle. I'll press enter and I can choose to replace each instance individually by just answering yes or no or I could just do A for all. So I'll just do A. Let's see what happens. And there we go. It replaced every occurrence of port with turtle. Now I'm going to exit out of the text editor. I am not going to save my changes. I wouldn't be able to anyway, because I don't have permission to write to this file. So control X and it's asking me, would you like to save changes? Well, certainly not. I was just playing around and turtle is not a valid configuration option anyway. So I'll just press N for no. And now I'm back on the terminal. So I'm going to stop the video right here and give you a chance to practice creating and editing files. And you know, I also mentioned that the touch command does something special if the file already exists. I did mention that in the previous video. So you could go ahead and try that against any files you create and also practice viewing the contents as well. And then once you are good on that, you can go ahead and move into the next video and I'll see you there.